This question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentations. This is from signal system subjects and related to Laplace transform topic. The question is the input xt to a system is related to its output yt as this given equation. Here ut represents a unit step function. The transfer function of the system is which of the following options. Okay, So, we have four options here. So, we have a, you know, like a differential equations. So, where output is yt and input is xt. So, we have to get the corresponding transfer functions, of course, in the S domain. <coughs> so, let us, uh, what is the transfer function? By the way, the transfer function nothing but the ratio of output to input in the Laplace domain, right? So, basically, if I denote the transfer function is h of s, h of s is given by y of s divided by x of s. So, what I am doing is, let me try to apply the Laplace transform on this equations. If I do that, this happens to be s into y of s plus y of s is equals to 3 into x of s into e raised to power minus of 3s. Because uh, the shifting property says, if x of t having Laplace x of s, x of t minus t naught will have Laplace e raised to power minus s t naught into x of s. So, now... If I take y of s as common, this happens to be s plus 1 is equals to 3 into e raised to power minus of 3s into x of s. So, your y of s by x of s, which happens to be 3 into e raised to power minus of 3s divided by s plus 1. So, this is what is the transfer functions. Here, one small thing, okay, actually to be very honest. If you see the questions and if you see the options in a very strict sense, no option will actually match. Why? Because here if you see, you have x of t minus 3 into u of t minus 3, right? So basically, you know, if you try to find the Laplace transform of this entire thing, so in the S domain, there will be a convolution. And if the convolution operator will come, then it is not possible to take this ratio of y of s to x of s. Okay, see, so what I mean to say is, x of t minus t naught, it is having Laplace transform e raised to power minus of s t naught into x of, this is fine. Or similarly, if I say, what is the Laplace transform x of t, this happens to be x of s. But if I say, what is the Laplace of x of t into ut, okay, in time domain, there are multiplications, in frequency domain, there will be convolution. Okay, so to be very, in a very strict sense, so if there is a product operation like this, so, you know, it will result a convolution and the convolution after will come, that integration will come into pictures in S domain and then taking the ratio of y s to x of s, no option will match, okay. So, you know, ignoring uh, those all discussions, okay. So, this is what is the answer, 3 into e to power minus 3s divided by s plus 1. So, if you see, this is given in option B and B is the right answer for this question. This question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentation. This is from signal system subjects and related to the Fourier series topic. Some people may say this is from maths because Fourier series is there in mathematics as well as in signals. Okay. The question is, a periodic function f of x with period 2 is defined as f of x equals to this expression. Okay. The Fourier series of this function contains, so if you see the options, if you see, so, they are saying whether it is containing cos term, sin terms or only sin term or only cos terms, something like this and for what values of n, okay. So, basically such kind of questions are very common in the gate exam and these kind of questions are from the symmetry property, right. So, once you have the waveform by observing what kind of symmetry is present in the waveform, then we can decide. So, whether the series will contain sin terms or cosine terms. If sine or cosine, for what frequency? For all frequency, for odd frequency, something like this. So, here the waveform is not given directly, but the expression is given. So, that's why the first task is to draw the waveform first and then figure it out what is this, uh, you know, whether it is having odd symmetry or even symmetry or quarter wave symmetry, what kind of symmetry it is having. Accordingly, we may decide. So, that's why. So, let me take the x axis and the y axis as well so this is x and this is your f of x so the range if you see this range is from minus 1 to 0 this range is from 0 to 1 so the uh, you know one of the point is minus 1 other point of interest is 1 and the midpoint is 0 okay so if you see so these are nothing but the straight line equation right it is satisfying that mx plus c pattern so these are the straight line 
So if you have straight line, so if you get two points, you can easily draw the waveform. And by the way, this expression very frequently it is used in the case study, you know, while learning the course. So if some of you are acquainted with this directly, you can tell what kind of waveform this will result. Otherwise, you may take two points. So if I am observing the first one, okay, if I substitute here x equals to minus 1, then what is going to happen? If I substitute x equals to minus 1, okay, so minus 1 and minus of minus 1, minus 1 plus 1, 0. So that means one of the point I will get is 0, right? And if I substitute here 0, if I substitute here 0, so in this expression, this is giving me minus 1. So minus 1 is somewhere here. So these are two points. So I may join this freehand. So this is how it will look like. Similarly, if I come to the uh, second one, if I substitute x equals to 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0. So this point value is 0. And if I substitute x equal to 0, 1 minus 0 is basically 1. So 1 is here. So this is your 1. And if I am joining them freehand, so this is how it will look like. Okay. So this is the waveform. Now, some of you have doubts that 0, you know, like we don't see a equality in 0, right? So, here you can, you, you see, you know, equality is not used, even here also not used. It means that this is a point of discontinuity, okay? It means that it's a point of discontinuity and that's what is happening. At uh, x equal to 0, the signal is making a transition from minus 1 to plus 1, okay? So, that's okay. Otherwise, in a very strict sense, if you want to plot, you can think of 0 minus and 0 plus, so these are two points you will get, then obviously you will conclude that yes, there is a discontinuity. So this is how the waveform will look like. So what kind of symmetry this function is having? So this is satisfying the odd symmetry, isn't it? This is satisfying the odd symmetry. What is the condition of odd symmetry? f of x is equals to minus of f of minus x. This is the condition of odd symmetry. Because if this is f of x, if I ask you how does this uh, f of minus x will look like? So this will be looking something like this, like this. So this is what your f of minus x. But whether f of x equals to f of minus x, no, these two are not equivalent. Then if I multiply a minus sign here, so if I ask you to plot what is minus f of minus x, that means you multiply minus 1 on this, then this will result this waveform. So yes, this is satisfying or symmetry. And if a function is satisfying or symmetry, okay, so what does it mean? If a function is satisfying odd symmetry, it means this will contain only sine terms. There is no place for cos terms. So cos options are eliminated. Option D is gone. Option C is gone. Option A is gone. Only option is B. So it will contain sine terms. Right? Because cos is an even function. If a function is purely odd, there is no place of the even terms. It will contain only odd terms. So, so only, only sine terms will come. And for all value of n, because this waveform is not satisfying the half wave symmetry, so that you can say, you know, it, uh, it, m is value is odd like 1, 3, 5 and something like this. It is not having that one. So all the value of n will exist from 1 to infinite. So the answer is option B for this. So I am explaining that's why I have taken this much of time. But if you solve this in proper flow, hardly you will take uh, one minute of time. Once this uh, waveform is, you know, coming to your mind, then directly you can say yes, it's an odd waveform. Odd waveform means it will contain sine terms. That's all. So answer is option B. This question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentation. This is from signal system subjects and related to the system property. The question is the output of a system yt is related to input x of t according to the relation yt equals to xt into sine 2 pi t. The system is, so the options are linear and time invariant. Non-linear and time invariant. Non-linear and time variant. So basically, we are supposed to comment regarding the linearity, non-linearity, and time variance and time invariance. Right. So this is a very standard model question, so what we get in the gate exam, right? So uh, regarding the linearity, so what I can say is the given equation is yt is equals to x of t into sine of 2 pi t. So basically, if I ask you so what is y1 t plus y2 t so this will be x1 t into sine of 2 pi t plus x2 t into sine of 2 pi t that means if x of t is producing output x of t into sine 2 pi t x1 t will produce x1 t into sine 2 pi t x2 t will produce x2 t into sine 2 pi t so what is y1 t plus y2 t so this is what you will get but if I say what is <coughs> y uh, total, y t t, I mean this is the output because of input 
x1 t plus x2 t so what do you get so in place of x of t so you are supposed to give the input x1 t plus x2 t so x1 t plus x2 t whole multiplied by sin of 2 pi t now don't you think y t t is equals to y1 t plus y2 t yes so this is definitely satisfying the additive property if you want to check the uh, what homogeneity of scaling property that will also satisfy so in other words so if i denote this by alpha and this by beta so this will be alpha x1 t and this will be beta x2 t okay i mean if you scale the corresponding thing so even here also if we multiply this by a constant so this is satisfying so yes so this is linear system so non linear options are eliminated okay so now you have to check whether it is time variant or time invariant so the first thing is what is your y of t minus t not so if you replace the t by t minus t in the expression this happens to be x of t minus t not into sin of 2 pi into t minus t not so this is y of t minus t not but if i say what is uh, you know y t t i mean this is the output because of the input x of t minus t not so this is the output because of input x of t so if i say i am not giving the input x of t i am giving the input x of t minus t not so what is the change this x of t will replace by x of t minus t not so you get x of t minus t not into sin of 2 pi into t minus t not so naturally if you compare this and this these two are equal no they are not equal so hence it is not time invariant this is time variant so the answer is linear and time variant if you check this is given option a c is also not correct because it is saying time invariant so it is actual time variant so this is again a in the previous year if you see in electrical this exact question has been asked this equation so the answer is linear and time invariant sorry time variant this question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentation this is from sigma system subjects and related to the Fourier transform topic. The question is, a signal X of T is band limited between 100 Hz and 200 Hz. A signal Y T is related to X of T as follows. The statement that is always true is, so if you see these four options, basically you are supposed to find at what frequency range the spectrum of Y T will exist. Okay, so what you can do in this case is, uh, for analysis purpose, so let's say X of T having Fourier transform X of omega, so let me first draw a rough sketch of x of omega. So if I say this is my x of omega, so this is my omega axis. So if you see they are saying that we exist in the range of 100 dash to 200 dash because I have taken here omega axis. So in radian per seconds, 100 into 2 pi becomes 200 pi and 200 into 2 pi becomes 400 pi. And let's say this height is one. <coughs> so if x of t having Fourier transform x of omega, then x of t minus 5 using shifting property, this will be x of omega into e raised to power minus j5 omega. Then if I am replacing the t with 2t in the above expression, so it means so this will be 1 by a x of omega by a. So that means wherever omega is there, we will be replacing it with omega by 2. So similarly, e raised to power minus j5 omega by 2. So, so if this function is yt, okay, if yt is this function, then it means your y of omega is equals to half into x of omega by 2 into e raised to power minus j, this is 2.5 omega, okay, e raised to power minus j 2.5 omega, this is what is y of omega. So basically, we need to check, so at what frequency range this spectrum will lie, okay. So, if I ask you what is y omega magnitudes, so this happens to be half of x of omega by 2 magnitudes, right? Because this complex exponential factors have magnitude uh, 1, right? <coughs> so, basically any complex quantity having two parameters, one is the magnitude and one is the phase. And generally while finding the frequency range and all, we concentrate only on the magnitude part, not on the phase part. Why? Because after a certain frequency, if the magnitude is zero, so the phase is not having any meaning, right? If I say I have a sinusoid whose amplitude is zero and the phase is something, it really doesn't make any sense, right? So that's why while commenting the frequency range and all, we generally focus on the magnitude part only. 
so if x of omega let's say i am taking this is magnitude having this is what is the nature so now if i ask you what is this y of omega magnitudes so what will happen so the peak amplitude will be definitely half because of the multiplying factor so this height is basically half and this range what is this frequency points so because of this omega by 2 factor so this 200 pi is 200 pi into 2 that becomes 400 pi and 400 pi is 400 pi into 2 that becomes 800 pi but again not to forget these are nothing but the uh, what omega radian per second so if i ask in the hertz unit you have divided by 2 pi so if you divide by 2 pi so this becomes 200 hertz and this becomes 400 hertz right so y of omega will be band limited in the range of 200 hertz to 400 hertz 200 hertz to 4 that is given in option c and c is the right answer so generally we are habituated to you know uh, learn the property in the omega domain rather than f domain that's why even though the information given is in f i dealt with omega then later at the end i have again converted this back into f so the answer is option c here this question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentation this is from signal subjects and from laplace transform topic the question is the signal x of t equals to t minus 1 whole square into u of t minus 1 where ut is the unit step function has the laplace transform x of s the value of x of 1 is okay so these are the options we have so if you see this function looking like a parabolic function but there is a shifting so to start with let me start with the RAM function which is t into ut. So you know very well its Laplace transform is given by 1 by s square. I hope all of you know this because ut having 1 by s, t into ut having 1 by s square. So if I multiply t factor here, so t into uh, t ut, so by Laplace transform property minus d by ds of this is 1 by s square. So this is basically t square into ut. So if you find this quantity, so this happens to be 2 by s cube so this is what the level of t square into ut now if i introduce a shift so t minus 1 whole square into u of t minus 1 by shifting property i have to multiply a factor e raised to power minus of s because x of t minus t naught will apply x of s into e raised to power minus s t naught so you will get this one so if i say this is what is my x of t so this is what is my x of s so basically x of s is given by 2s cube into e raised to power s so what we need so we need basically x of 1 right that's what we need what is the value of the function in s domain at s equals to 1 if you substitute s equals to 1 that happens to be 2 by e that happens to be 2 by e because s is 1 means s cube is 1 and e raised to power 1 is 1 so this is basically 2 by e and if you see this is given an option b so b is the right answer for this this question is asked in gate 22 of instrumentation this is from signal system subjects and related to the bilinear transformation concept the question is consider the transfer function hc of s this is given bilinear transformation with a sampling period of 0.1 second is employed to obtain the discrete time transfer function sdz then sdz is so this is what uh, you know the various options are given in this question so this is a standard model and a method oriented questions i can say right so if you uh, why this technique is used by linear transformations if you have a s domain function if you want to get its equivalent z domain function or the transfer function in the z domain for the discrete systems so there is a technique called by linear transformations uh, like this there are impulse invariant technique and some other techniques are there right to convert a s domain function into the z domain function with a given sampling period so this is a standard data you know in the bilinear transformation what we do is so wherever the s term is there so s is replaced by the factor s is equals to 2 by ts into 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse so this is what is the substitution you have to make in place of s if you are using bilinear transformations so here the sampling period ts is given 0.1 so 2 by 0.1 is 20 so in this particular questions so it is 20 and this is 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse so in this particular transfer function hc of s wherever s is there i'll be replacing that s by this function and by simplifying that one of the options should match 
so if i ask you to tell me what is your sdz so this will be 1 by s plus 1 so in place of s this is 20 into 1 minus z inverse uh, by 1 plus z inverse this is uh, this one second uh, this is s plus 1 right so this is what one factor similarly the other factor will be s plus 3 so again in place of s this is 20 into 1 minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse plus 3 so this is what uh, are the factors we have so <coughs> we have to multiply uh, what uh, you know basically it has to be simplified there are n number of ways that how can we simplify so let us multiply 1 plus z inverse whole square in denominator and denominator so this becomes 1 plus z inverse whole square okay and the denominators if you multiply 1 plus n whole square so in this particular term this will becomes 20 into so 1 minus z inverse okay plus 1 sorry this will also be uh, okay one second so if i multiply this on i mean one okay so i mean one plus z inverse will be multiplied to this term and one plus z inverse will be multiplied to this term that's what i mean so if i multiply here so this will be cancelled out and in this one becomes it is one plus z inverse this is what you will get from the first square bracket term similarly in the second square bracket term again so if you multiply this this will be cancelled so you will be left with 20 into 1 minus z inverse plus 3 into 1 plus z inverse so now you have to simplify this so if you simplify this what do you get so this is equals to 1 plus z inverse whole square and this becomes 20 minus 20 z inverse okay and then it is plus 1 plus z inverse the second square bracket becomes 20 minus 20 z inverse plus 3 plus 3 z inverse so equivalently this becomes 1 plus z inverse whole square whole divided by how much you'll get here you'll get 1 and then it is how much uh, not 1 actually so this will be 21 right 20 plus 1 this become 21 21 and this is minus 20 this is plus 1 so this is minus 19 z inverse similarly here this will be 20 plus 3 that become 23 and this is minus 20 this is plus 3 so this becomes minus 17 z inverse okay is it matching with any option so 1 plus z inverse whole square divided by 21 minus okay so if you see so 1 plus z inverse whole square is there in the uh, what so b and uh, b option is anyway eliminated so 1 plus z inverse whole square is there in the numerator in a and in c and in d and again if i compare so i need 21 minus 19 z inverse 21 minus 19 z so this is the term and this is the term so next i need 23 minus 17 z inverse so this is what is the term i expect so here it is 17 minus 20 this is not correct and even uh, this option a if you see actually option a is also representing no 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 so op, it is 19 minus 20 so this is not correct so yeah so this exact option is given in the option c okay so such kind of question has been asked in the instrumentation branch uh, in the previous papers also so the simple thing is wherever s is there you have to replace it by 2 by t into 1 uh, minus z inverse divided by 1 plus z inverse okay and by simplifying that so you know in this case one of the option is matching so not a tough problem but it seems uh, there are a lot of mathematical calculation but the way the data are given even uh, reaching to the options is also not taking much time so the answer is option c for this